Welcome to Friday Photography. Um, I'm probably going to be looking down most of this video because I've got my iPad in front of me, but you'll be able to see my face up in the top corner and um, it's just me being able to explain what's going on. Um, you should be able to see my little cursor on my iPad just there um, so you can follow what I'm clicking. Uh, feel free to just pause this video as you go along. It should take about an hour for you to complete what we're going to do today. So we're going to look at, um, at double exposures. So we've been working over the past few weeks with uh, Photoshop Mix. You all should have it on your iPad. Um, if you don't, if you go down to the App Store and just click on search and type in Photoshop Mix, it's there. Adobe Photoshop Mix, cut out, combine and create. And that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing some cutting out, combining and a little bit of creating. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so what I've done is I've uploaded on the Google Drive, which again, we, we, we've all got a copy of, um, in the class resources file, where it says Friday Open Photography. Inside there, some of the images that we're going to use. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to click on those and download them to your camera roll. So for the tutorial, we're just going to be using two, but I'd like you to have a go with all of them. So this image on the left here of the, uh, the guy looking down with his eyes closed, and I'm also going to use um, the stars and the silhouette trees just over here. So they're the two that we're going to use for this session. So download them before you carry on with the tutorial. Okay, so then into Photoshop Mix and what we're going to do is we're going to press the plus button down there into image my iPad recents and the images that you've downloaded so I'm going to choose this guy now what I want to be able to do when we're doing double exposure is I want to be able to take him away from the background so I don't want that grey background on there, I want to cut him out and I want to kind of, I want to lift him off that background. Okay, so in order to be able to do that, if you click on cut out, click on the smart cut out tool and then click on add. What we're going to do is we're going to go carefully around the edge. Now, if you've got an Apple pencil, this will be a lot easier, but don't worry about it. If you zoom in, it works just as well with your finger. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to start from the edge and I'm just going to carefully draw around this person's shoulders. We'll go back to colouring all of that in a bit later, but I just want to get the edges sorted first. So again, forgive me that I'm looking down a lot because I'm working on this. You, you get the idea. So cutting around and his chin, moving. Nose. That squeaking sound that you can hear, by the way, is my desk chair. It's a little bit wobbly. So make sure that you get everything look because sometimes you kind of miss. And don't worry, don't worry too much if you go over to the edge a little bit like there. Like I've gone over a little bit there with a bit of the background. So I'll, I'll show you how we'll sort that out um, later on. So don't worry about that yet. I'd rather that we cut out too much with a bit of background than cut parts of his face out. All right. So just quickly getting around his hair again, look. That section there, gone over a little bit, but it doesn't matter at this moment. So moving around. Filling in that area. Down the sides. Bringing all that down with you as you go along. And then quickly get around the edge. There. All the way to the bottom. Don't want to see any of those little grid marks. So, like I said, parts of this you can see have got like the background in there and in there. So in order to get rid of those, what you can do 
you can click on the subtract tool and the subtract subtract tool should take away some of that background like that okay I'm not too fussed about those bits on the end of his nose and I'll show you why in a second because what I want to do next is I want to click on oh hello what's happened down there it's about to go all the way down look <laughs> all right there we go um so what I want to do is click on the tool that says basic and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take away something minus and I'm gonna mess around with my brush sizes. So I kinda want a small brush that's not, so that's over here. So I want a small brush that's got quite a fuzzy edge. Um, yeah, about 30 in size. And then what I can do with that is I can take away, maybe a bit smaller. Again, that's all, all over here. I can take away some of those rough edges. Oops. And I can smooth. Some of it out. So what Photoshop Mix is good at is it's good at noticing where edges are and where those like rough cuts are around there where it's all jaggedy and you can use your finger to just take away some of those edges and really soften them up and get some of those like hair blends through you can take some off you can add some back in if you want to so you can click the uh, the add button like i just went a bit further down there when i shouldn't have done you can bring some of it back yeah back down to the minus button so take your time with this bit and get those edges really nice and refined i might even make my brush size a little bit bigger brushing those really rough jagged edges out <laughs> so like I say take your time with it there's no rush and what you're doing by eliminating those jagged edges, it'll make your um, your image look like it sits on the background better and not like it's been you know, cut out with a rough pair of scissors. So that's what we want. We want it to look realistic. Like I say, you want to put it to every little bit. Some bits are cut out quite nice. Like over here, there's bits of hair on there and they're cut out quite nice. It did a good job. But just on the, oops. Just on the jaggedy bits. Just on those jaggedy bits. I can take some of those rough areas out. And can you see, as you make your line, it'll cut it out and then it'll bring some of it back to blend. I went a little bit, um, a little bit much in there. But again, look, like, draw it in and it'll, it'll bring a little bit of it back. It'll smooth it back out again. 
head keeps dipping out of camera because I'm trying to get close to this iPad. So I do apologise. You see me disappear and you just see me bike up in corner there. So just this last part to finish off. Want a little bit on that there. That's looking a little bit jagged. And then you shouldn't end up there. Look. There we go. So you should have a decent cut out there. So when you're happy and your edges are all nice and smooth, there's no rough edges on there. I can't remember where I started. <laughs> started on nose, didn't I? All right, so let's take some of these out. Around his chin. I'm just here, I'm thinking to myself, God, look at his shoulder over there, not doing a very good job there, look at that. Let's get that fixed. There we go. That's better, look. And they're nice and smooth. Brilliant. So once you've done that, you can um, come over to the tick button down at the bottom to confirm. And then, what we can then do, and I missed a bit out of his face there. Just a look. Try and add some of that back in. Yeah, look at that. So you see, if you make a mistake like I've just done there, you can always go back into your cutout and add some back in. And there we go, looks so like I didn't quite cut all of his face out there. So that's good. So what we've done is we've essentially removed all of the background there. There's no background in, which now means we can put our own backgrounds in. So if you press the plus button and we just press color, what I want is um, a white background. So white is the default, but you can go any color you want over there. But I'm gonna go white for now. It should snap back into the middle. Press done and then a white background will appear. Now it'll look like it's got rid of our image. It hasn't. Our image is still sitting over here, look. So we want to kind of put this new layer, what we call a layer, underneath this background. So you can grab it and you can take it and you can drop it underneath like that. There we go. So we've got our guy and our background. Our guy, our background. Our guy, our background. All right. So. What do we say next? We need to sort out the um, adjustments. So if you go down to the bottom there, where it says adjustments, click on it. We kind of want to make him like a silhouette, not a full silhouette, because we still want to see some of his facial features. So if you click on the exposure button and bring that all the way down until you get him to almost be a silhouette, then we'll click on the contrast button. And again, bring that up slightly so that it brings all of those shadows around his facial features. Click on shadows, again, bring it down so that some of that hair goes jet black. And then, where it says temperature, I like to make my temperature quite cold. So he's got kind of a blue sort of a, yeah, a bit more. Kind of a blue sort of a tint to it. So it looks like it's night time. Okay. So once you've got that, once you're happy with your silhouette, I might come back and I might make it a bit darker later, but we'll see what it looks like when I put the um, put the blend mode on. Okay. So once you've done that, we're then going to add our new image. Click on image, back to your iPad, back to your recents, and I said I was going to go for this night sky, didn't I? So click, night sky. Now, you'll notice that it hasn't quite filled the top of the page. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to pinch and zoom and bring it in as much as you want. Now, I like to go a little bit over so that I can get what I want. So I've gone a little bit over there. 
So I'm quite happy with that. And then what I then need to do is I need to bring it, <coughs> excuse me, and to bring it in between our layers. So I'm going to grab it, hold on to it, bring it down and put it in between our layers. All right. And then I'm going to put a blend mode on it. Actually, do you know what? Forget that. I'm not bringing it in between our layers. I'm just testing you. I put it on top. All right, I'm going to put a blend mode on that. So if you click on blend, and we click on screen. So there's lots of different blend modes and they'll all do different things and they'll all do some quite funky effects. So you might get ones where you've got bits of background in there and you might get ones where you've just got the colour coming through. But we, in order to get a double exposure, a good double exposure, we need to click on screen. So screens are double exposure. And you might think to yourself, you know what? Once you've clicked it, that that pretty much looks done, that you're quite happy with that. But you might decide that, you know, there's too much face coming through there, or there's not a lot of background here and too much of his body showing through that you might want to have it more of a silhouette. So, what we can then do is if we click on the um, adjustments buttons again, Click on our face, sorry. Click on the adjustments button again and go back to your exposure. Like I said, you can bring that down again and make it even darker. If you want to, you can take the entire face out and just have it as a full silhouette. Whereas I, I kind of like to see a little bit of um, face coming through, if I'm honest. So maybe. You just bring it up to about five percent, and you still get part of his mouth coming through, and then part of the scenery. Okay, so when you're happy with it, we're going to save it. So what we need to do then is we need to click on the little share button at the top over there, and you're going to save it to your camera roll. So it's completed. Press OK. And then what I would like you to do is I'd like you to upload it back to your Friday open photography folder. So I'd like to see some of what you've done in these folders here. Okay. I also want you to have a go with the roses and the other flowers that I've put on there and some of the different backgrounds, or you could try it with a girl. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll, run, I'll run through it again one more time so that you can see what I'm doing. So back to Photoshop, we'll click out of that, so we click on the plus button, we click on image. And you pick whatever you want. Should we go for the flower next? Then we'll go for the rose. It's a little, little rose there. What we need to do is we need to go to the cutout button and we need to press plus. Once you've done that, we zoom in and we can start to cut out. Well, if we click on smart, click on smart, we can start to cut out magnetically the edges of our flower. Again, don't worry if you get a bit of the background in there, it doesn't matter. You can always come back and fix it later. There are some little bits I'm not too fussed about. I'm not too fussed about that little. that little bit as well and that bit so we can get to edge 
all the way across. And then remember, because I forgot last time, make sure that every single little bit is cut out. So then we click on our basic tool, make sure that we've got a soft edge brush. You can choose the size, but I think I have mine at about 15. And then we go around the edges, or we would do if I pick the right one, minus button. We go around the edges to soften up the cut. Soften it up. So I'm just going to do this nice and quickly. You can take your time with it. Make sure that it looks amazing. Actually, better not do it too quickly, look, because I'm uh, completely messing it up. That's better. Here's somebody doing a mowing outside. I can brush a little bit bigger. Is up. Just getting rid of all of those little jagged edges, those nasty little bits that make our image look like it's been plonked or like it's been cut out with your teeth. Remember, what Photoshop clever tool, it brings some of that edge back for you and fades it. Gives it a bit of a, what we call a gradient, like a gradient fade, just to soften them edges. Oh yeah, look, we've got a really ugly jagged edge there that we can soften up. Actually, I'm not sure if that was part of the original photograph. Not to worry. Yeah. All the way around. And we're happy. There we go, look. Lovely rose we've got there. If you want to, um, for me, this is a little bit... I'm not really keen on these edges here. I want to try and crop this. I wonder if it'll let us crop it. Yeah, there's a button up there. So we should be able to bring some of these edges in, look, and crop it a little bit. Because I don't like... Maybe make it a bit taller as well. See if we can do that. Yeah. Can we? Yeah. There we go. Well, that's better. So we can give it a crop. There we go. Much better. And if you want to enlarge slightly. Get it nice and central. You can, just adjust it, it looks really good. Right, okay, so adjustments. Back to adjustments, remember, exposure. So for me, I need to bring it down to almost a silhouette, but I still wanna keep some of those shapes in there. Temperature, again, cool it down. Nice midnight rose. Contrast. Bring that up so you get some nice dark bits in there. Bring those shadows down so you know it's a rose, but it's still got some really dark edges. It's those dark edges that's gonna bring those backgrounds through. Okay, so next, add your color. Remember we want it white, it should already be white. Press done. Bring that background below your silhouette rose. Add in your new image. So we're gonna go for, I think we'll go for this one next. 
let's cancel because we can resize it ourselves. Look like that. Okay, and then we go over to blend and we click on one of these two, either lighten or screen. It's up to you. So lighten would bring that through. Screen would bring more of the rows out. Oh, now see what's happened with this one because the the background is a lot lighter. I think that we can bring back some of our adjustments. So I think, oops, just bear with me. Click back on your rows. I think we can underexpose that a little bit more. Bring some of that back. So I'm gonna keep the temp down. There we go. I quite like it. Oh, I like that one. And then the screen one, which is a bit more pink. I think I'm going to go with the light and blend mode. And there we go. Look at that. So then you can click save again to your camera roll. That's okay. And then when you're done, upload to your OneDrive. Now I can't show you. Um, how to upload on this tutorial because I'm in aeroplane mode up there so that my notifications and text messages and things like that don't keep showing up. But if you just press plus and tell me who you are and just add it to there, then I'll know which one's your double exposure. All right, so that's two. It's taken me just under half an hour. If you take your time, you follow the tutorial properly, you should be able to get about two done in an hour. All right, so enjoy that. Double exposure, Photoshop mix.